Hello, Augies Worldwide. My name is Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Mark, KK7HLE. Now, he has a question about CW and learning general, uh, learning to become a general, and whether a hamstick will work for him in an apartment. It's like three different questions, and I'll try and address all three of them. Now, before I do that, I'd like to pay special thank you to Tim Bloom. Tim is a relatively recent patron on Patreon.com. Now, what a patron is, is somebody who helps support the channel. You, too, can become a patron by going to Patreon.com slash KE0OG and pick a method that works for you. And you'll find that there are methods there for as little as $2 a month. And it's great. I really appreciate the support of all the patrons that I have. Now let's take a look at uh, Mark's question here. He's a new tech, okay, and has become very interested in learning CW or Morse code. Um, and that's a wonderful thing to do. Uh, CW has a long, long tradition in ham radio. And in fact, uh, since other people have given up on CW, like for ship to shore and stuff like that, um, hams are about the last group of people using Morse code. We use the international Morse code rather than the American railroad code. Interesting to know where the CW comes from. It used to be radios were powered by sparks, very powerful sparks. The sparks radiated a lot of energy, and by putting inductive and capacitive circuits together, you could kind of narrow that energy down to something you could transmit over the air. The note was rough and harsh, and many different ways were used to try and sweeten that. However, the thing that came along later was a instead of making these what were called damped waves for the spark, they found a way to create continuous waves, which sounded in the radio like a simple tone, a continuous wave. Now, obviously, CW is not a continuous wave because you interrupt it, right? You only put out this wave when you're actually creating characters, but the name stuck. It's been CW ever since for 100 years now, and I don't think you or I are going to change that. So um, let's take a look at He is committing himself to learning the code and then moving on to upgrading his license to general. Now note that um, once he learns his code, technicians do have code privileges on HF, but I would suggest going ahead and getting that general so you can get a nice radio and use your voice privileges as well. There are a number of ways of learning CW um, and the one I recommend is to go to Google, search for G4FON, that's Golf 4 Fox Oscar November, okay? And uh, although he has passed away, there, his uh, software lives on, and it's the best I've seen for learning code by yourself. Also, there's an organization called the Long Island CW Club, where you actually get on the air with mentors, live mentors, who work you through learning the code. Now, there is only one uh, attribute that you need to learn the Morse code. And that attribute is perseverance. Because your CW is going to come, you're gonna plateau, it seems like you don't make any progress, then suddenly you learn more, then it plateaus again. And this will do that until you get up the code to about 15 to 18 words a minute, which is about where a lot of CW contacts uh, take place. Now some take place at 35 or 40, you can save those for later. Okay, now his next question has to do with living in an apartment on the third floor and he has a balcony. Okay, my question is regarding the ubiquitous hamstick. MFJ makes a little thing that will clip onto the balcony rail. 
and the hamstick will go out at an angle and then it has a wire attached to it you can use as a counterpoise just run it somewhere in the room behind you and you tune the antenna by tuning it pulling the stinger in and out of the hamstick and then tightening that down you do that with an SWR meter back at your station okay so this often takes two people to do you've got somebody to take the the SWR talk to you over the radio says make the stinger a little longer a little shorter okay shorter means that it'll transmit at a higher frequency now these hamsticks are a little misunderstood they are compromise antennas in the sense that they have very low bandwidth but for the frequency that they are tuned to they can be very good antennas okay but if you tune more than just a few hertz either side of it you'll be out of tune you have to tune for a different frequency so what you have to do with these is tune them to your most popular frequency okay the frequency you like the best it could be up in the sideband or you can take it down to FT8 or CW for that matter if you tune it for FT8 it'll probably be good on CW too okay so um, their compromise antennas in the sense that they have high Q they are not compromise antennas in the sense that they will radiate they do radiate um, they're not very compromised okay will CW as a mode be able to make up for some of this compromise okay two things to understand here one antennas are mode agnostic they don't care what is being transmitted through them it just goes out their job is to make the coupling between your radio circuit and the electromagnetic field okay that's their only job and you can put code you can put voice you can put anything you want on these antennas as long as the bandwidth fits within the bandwidth of the antenna and CW will certainly do that now the other part of the answer to that question is CW being a single tone source is much easier to pick up at the other end than voice when voice fades down into the noise CW collapses the bandwidth like this so all this noise gets thrown out so there's much less noise per signal okay now the measure of noise it's done in DB Hertz and it depends on the bandwidth in Hertz a single sideband is about two and a half kilohertz you get all that noise with CW you can tune it down to the point where the noise is really mostly eliminated and you can hear the signal some signals will be so weak that they're still hard to, to tell I have heard numbers trying to quantify this saying that a CW signal will be 10 dB better than a sideband signal I don't know where that number comes from I've heard that I would think it would be even better than that with a modern receiver okay like the 70, uh, 7300 ICOM 7300 that I have right here has um, a lot of uh, CW reception features in it that make it very good for that sort of thing okay um, I would like to avoid sinking money into a magnetic loop if possible I don't blame you mag loops have the same problem as those uh, hamsticks in that they're very narrow bandwidth okay maybe a little wider than a mag loop would be the magnetic loop has the advantage of being tunable to anywhere in the band but you're going from like a hundred dollars for the different parts and pieces to five six seven hundred dollars for a mag loop antenna okay they both work they both have the compromise in the same direction which is bandwidth my experience with the MFJ uh, mag loop is that it's about equal to a dipole in terms of its ability to send and receive 
what's different is the bandwidth. Okay, so there you have it. I hope that helps you answer your question. Uh, move forward. Good luck with that CW. Don't let that stop you from studying for and getting your general because that general will really open up things for you. There is a reference station, meaning a reference system design of a station goes from power supply all the way through to the antenna. Okay, all the different parts and pieces. That's a good starting point for deciding what you want to get for your general station. And I use the 7300 uh, in that station. So there you have it. If you have watched this far in this video, I think you're probably a real supporter of my channel and I appreciate it. Please make sure that you subscribe and you can go ahead and click like to get um, notification of future videos. Now, um, also, if you would like to support this channel financially, go to decastlercom support and pick a method that works for you. Until we next meet, 73.